So, today on the bench, we are going to characterize this inductor, and that we are going to do by just taking a test lead, uh, wrapping it around it 10 times, so that we can get actually a decent amount of inductance out of it, so it becomes easier to measure, because a single turn isn't much, and a 100 ohm resistor, which we are looking at each side of it. We're looking at the source side with channel 1 on the R oscilloscope, and on the inductor side with channel 2. So, just by looking at the difference in voltage between these two channels, we can see the current flowing through our resistor. And then we can also look at the voltage over our inductor and the current input voltage from our source. Quite a powerful measurement setup. Then we are having our single generator, uh, which is just hooked into this. And it's also hooked over into, well, this diode that doesn't really go anywhere. So it's hooked on. So everything is on the same side of the diode, so the other lead of the diode is not really doing anything at all. I'm just using the diode as a convenient place to hook this onto, and I'm having a jumper lead over to this other diode that's just a convenient place to hook, on, hook things onto. So don't hook things onto the opposite side of the diode, because you don't really want your power to flow through the diode in this case. So, so the reason why I'm characterizing this transformer is because, or this course because I'm going to build a transformer out of it and I'm going to build a switch mode power supply using these should probably find the part number for these and actually put into the video uh, so this is a switch mode power, power supply controller meant for mains voltage applications and then I also have some end channel MOSFETs which are also meant for switch mode power supplies for mains voltage applications so this is like 400 volt rated or something crazy what you can get these days and then we have some diodes, because the feedback that actually powers the chip when the power supply is running, it requires some rectification. We have a potentiometer, a 10 turn one, a bit overkill for a power supply, but why not? And then we have our optocoupler, which is going to well, send back this stuff. So everything's going to work quite nicely. So this is generally what is needed for power supply, of course, is not having all the filter capacitors and stuff like that. The main bridge rectifier is also missing from here. Okay, you could just build out of diodes, but... So yeah, not all components there, but the basics. So yeah, back to here. So our, the single generator we're going to, going to use is, is this one up here. So it, this is just cheap one off eBay. I wouldn't even recommend buying this because there are actually better versions of single generators from the same company on the market. So yeah, don't buy this one. There is a main problem with this, which is why I don't have anything connected, is when this is starting up, it actually turns on both channels, which is stupid, because if you happen to have anything connected to it, then you're currently going to put in 10 mega -hatch or 10 kilo -hatch at 10 volts. So sensitive RF components can actually be fried by this thing which is not that fun. But we're gonna run at about 60 kilowatts today because that's the actual operational frequency of the chip. So it wouldn't make any sense to measure any characteristics at any other frequency. Okay, technically it still does make sense, but well, because it's running at 60 kilowatts, I'm gonna measure it at 60 kilowatts because it's logical. The transformer, the reason why I'm building this switch mode power supply is because this transformer here uh, has seen better days. It has, I've actually blown the American voltages on it, uh, which the actual uses within its current path. So it actually sends, if you were using the European like 250 volt setting on this, then it goes all the way down here before it reaches neutral. So I've actually blown the transformer to spitterines inside, which isn't a good thing, because now it doesn't actually work. This transformer were used within this, so yeah, I'm still working on getting this thing up and running, because this transformer, well, it doesn't really work, because the, this is using the same transformer core as we're having over here, and these cores are, well, not really meant for mains frequencies. So this is meant for, well, a couple of kilowatts, maybe tens of kilowatts, maybe even hundreds. I don't really know. That's why I'm testing it today. So yeah. You could just measure the inductance of this using something like, uh, like an LCR meter like this one from eBay and just measure it. According to this meter, this is about 
the 10 turns is about 1.6 million degrees, but yeah, 1.6 million degrees is probably good enough, and it probably shouldn't vary too much over frequency, but well, I'm measuring anyway, because why not? So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook up our single generator, and yes, we're gonna use the Rigel uh, oscilloscope to measure this. We should probably gonna take a bit of time to start. So yeah. But the idea here is we can look at the difference between channel one and channel two to see the current flowing through our resistor. So simply state it's the voltage between these two divided by 100, and that's our current. And then we can look at the voltage over our coil with these two. Or, or just the voltage on channel 2, and then we can look at the voltage of our source with channel 1. So we're going to trigger off channel 1, because, well, that's our source voltage, and it's going to be the most stable. And then we're going to look at, have channel 2 and look at that as well. So, yep. So currently we're putting in a sine wave, which really doesn't really tell us anything. So we're going to go to 2 volts per division. So here's our sine wave, and we're going to change this to be a square wave, because, and we can see we have a bit of ringing, not too strange, we have a large freaking inductor here, so it's not really that strange that it's ringing, and we're also going to turn on channel 2, set channel 2 to, now it's the wrong knob, to 2 volts per division, and here we can see that we have well, over here we are currently sinking current into our source, which is a bit weird, but okay, no problem. And over here we're actually sourcing current, which is what we want to do. And we can see that we still have a fair bit of volts over our core, which is like, could it be? Two and a half, three volts, somewhere around there. And then we're having like one, one and a half volts over our resistor. And one and one, about, about one and a half volts is divide by 100 is about 15 milliamps, which is actually quite decent. Do note we're only putting in, well we can actually check here how many volts we're putting in, because we're putting in about 4 volts. Over on this side over here it's like closer to like 5, so. And yeah, this is about all that we actually wanted to know. So we can see that with this source resistance, it works quite nice. And that's about how easy we can measure this. We could take this resistor here instead, because this is slight bit lower value. So this is a 50 ohm resistor, and this is a 100 ohm resistor, these two in parallel. Gonna bring us to like 30, 40 ohms, somewhere around there. I'm not gonna do my math today. And then we can see we have even less of a voltage difference. But because we have less ohms as well, we are actually getting more current but I'm not gonna go into measuring that but yeah we should have more current right now or this is saturating because this isn't really meant to put out a lot of current so there's a risk that this is saturating but then we should really see the voltage drop off so but yeah and that's about it because but then I'm also planning on actually building a multi-rail output power supply but I'm, I need to study that separately and I'm not going to make a video on that today because my idea is I'm going to have the primary, I'm going to have a secondary for the digital side and then I'm going to have a secondary for the analog side where the analog side is not going to actually have any feedback because technically if we say that the digital rail is maxed out then the switch mode chip should turn off like it shouldn't put, put over any more power, meaning that as long as the digital rail is high, we're not going to get any power sent over. But because the digital rail in this multimeter consumes like a fair bit more power than the analog side, like than the total amount of power the analog side consumes, then that shouldn't really be a problem because the digital rail should always be the one to fall fastest. And when the digital rail falls, then when it pulls the digital rail up, then it's also going to pull the analog rails up. And because this, this power is also always going to be sent into the rail that has the lowest 
like resistance on it in other words the lowest voltage per turn and if the digital rail has is at its max voltage then the alloy rails should also be at their proper voltage so that at least on paper it should work but i'm going to need to look into it so i'm going to build a mock-up transformer which is even more nice that you can just wrap some wire around it like this so i'm probably going to build maybe not a mock-up on this with mains voltages or maybe i do who knows i'm crazy at times after all but see, I'll maybe put up like mains voltage section up here, DC voltage sec section down here, and well, of course, turn off the power in between measurements or in between actually doing filtering around with it to see if it works. But yeah, that's a later video, and that's probably gonna be fun to edit together. But yeah, see you next time because this is so far working as expected.